She's the tangerine dream flesh of my mood mood. Chime sequencing pulse and wet strings sweep across my lips. The melt melange cross-fading fugue of our limbs. Melodic zero-gravity somersaults of tongue and cosmic entheogen riffs. We are delphine flock, fin sewing waves and rippled stitch, wave table peyote and vibrant cymatics, comb flipping the duophonic bristles of oscillating timber with dip and hint of inhaled nuzzle. Flesh translates, transposes into higher octave, ascent in the key change of love. Bones are covered in nymph skin of assonance, through which mustang herds of euphony gallop on wild plains. Star thistle dissonance and Avanafatua cadence helicing like seaweed bronze in an ocean of glissando. Mind and emotions bled dripping from plasmatic form in humanoid morph, hands transmitters and antennae, radar flush of the chakra whitecaps, the ears feast of foam tap sand soothing the shore like membranes of love. Skin is coalescence of blood beats. Harmonies, tympanum, fire of ignited proximity, halogen opera of yearning and supernova. Someday, a thousand star systems out, the nova of our love will light a strange world sky in ripple delay. How they shall gasp and taste orgasmic light. May they drink and alien dream on that phosphorescence of adoration in new registers and never heard yet modes. Our octaves in ever ascent throughout the generation's refractions. For love, like light, wishes refraction, spilling askance from its focus to scatter feed the herds and flocks with unexpected gifts. And our affair was mammary in melodic overspill. Here is cream skimmed off the top. Our goal in writing should ever be to provide delight that would otherwise be impossible, and in so doing, to add to the storehouse of human pleasure by tickling people in new ways that awaken them to levels of felicity within the world, inaccessible by other means. For the world is hard and full of bristles and chafe, yet we may assuage and polish through practiced love that smooths out the world. Oh, I would still always want some roughness in the world. That is, after all, one of its pleasures. But I think that with all our smoothing, the abundance of roughness is a factor never to be doubted. It shall linger. But the commonwealth of delight ever needs funding. Its treasury can never be overfull, and many are in debt to suffering who need the gentle credit our bank freely provides. And the only interest we ask is the increase on delight itself. But to bring delight, delight must be found. And to be found, it must be faved against doubt. One must have a will to felicity that leaps the chasms of doubt to find where enchantment hides or has simply been neglected, briared in the obvious. Not simply to allay sorrows, although that would be a worthy enough goal alone to justify the pursuit, but even more to allow the sun its return on unconditional investment of light. Delight, to offer up the light of one's being, even as the sun does, to render the pleasure of one's being visible. Marx foresees the return to use value from exchange value. And what is use but enjoyment? And what is a gift but the ability to enjoy? Then through our delight we may communize mirth, raise here or out again, and be done with Grendel's thrashing of our common joy.